Hello out there. Welcome back. Welcome aboard. Today I want to go over the Olight M2R Warrior. And this is another single 18650 light. And give you a look at the box there. There's your stats. 1500 max for about 3 minutes. Oh, that's what it says. It is 3 minutes. Then it'll drop down to 700. And then 700 your high. And yeah, you got 250, 60, 15, and then a one lumen moonlight mode. So this is the original box that I got it in, the exterior box. So pretty big box you can see there. And then inside the box, there was another box, which is basically this. I mean, this was all put together, obviously. Notice it says, play charge fully before using. It's got a little bit of the instructions there. And then in here, the light sat in here. And then in here was your holster and your accessories and that. And this all came out individually. This is some kind of foam material. And the slot there is just for the, uh, no, it's not gonna go back in now. So inside there we had the, uh, the sheath. And then there was of course uh, Olight literature, you know, talking about other products. Of course that's in there and a little Olight lanyard which apparently I've not used yet and uh, but there's something else in there too and you get your full instruction book in English and several other languages and uh, it's uh, it's been a pretty good light oh that was the other thing you get the uh, Olight magnetic charger there so that just sticks on there and charges we'll get to that in a second there and the other end of it is just a regular USB. Was that USB A? I think that's what that one is. But uh, pretty nice overall light. Uh, it did come with the battery in it. They say it will only recharge this battery, but I was able to recharge other batteries with it too. And I guess it's a thing with O light. Yeah, uh, you probably can't see. It. Uh, you can kind of see it. That little white thing. That's the battery battery symbol, and it's pointing up. So you want to put your button facing towards your tail cap on this one and did this one no this one didn't have it on there on the tail cap it was just on there so if you get one of these make sure the button is pointing towards the tail cap what is on the tail cap on this one is it's talking about the button mode operation for the tail switch there uh, just real quick go over the charger here so when you plug the charger in there's a little light there it's green and it's just magnetic and you see it turns red there. And then when it's full, it'll turn green again. It'll still tail stand on this. And it's a little uneven because it's just on a towel there. And you get, you get some light modes. It's just going through all the light modes there. Oh, didn't want to do that yet. Yeah, so you can get through all your regular light modes while it's charging. And that actually works pretty well. It's a little bit of a downer that it's a proprietary thing, but it does seem to work well. And it's pretty nice that it allows it to tail stand. And actually I'll say that it tail stands better than the lights that I've used that have a uh, micro USB charging port on the side here. Because if you're trying to tail stand it while it's charging, the cord kind of kind of pulls on it. So you can, you can secure, get a piece of tape and secure the cable, but it's still kind of Oh no, they didn't seem to tail stand perfectly to me. So this one does that a lot better. And I really like that aspect. The sheath, uh, it does appear to be good solid quality. Uh, you've got your snap there. Uh, personally, when I've got the, the belt loop, I don't know if it will just unsnap it. So you've got the belt loop there that snaps, but then it's also sewn here too. I, I, I don't know why I just always go for the inside one there. And you've got your weird D-ring thing here to hang it off a pack. And yeah, a little hole in the bottom there. A little drainage hole there. And the uh, clip is not the normal Velcro clip. It's an actual clip clip. Uh, so it clips into place there. That's got a little strut covering it. And then to open it, you just press it and pull it out. So if you're not using it constantly or frequently, very frequently, this is uh, this is pretty good, and overall the sheath is very good. I don't want to, 
I don't want to criticize it too much because it really is good. And it's a lot better quality and I think it'll last a lot longer than what you get from most manufacturers of uh, flashlights and even knives and multi-tools. I know I got the, the Gerber Bull Rush a couple years ago and the tool is nice but the sheath is, it, the sheath was okay but the clip, uh, uh, what do you call it, the belt loops on it just were not very good and it started ripping after about a day so I got in and out of a vehicle two times, three times that day and when I got home took it off to look at it because I was testing the sheath out too it was already starting to tear along the belt loop. So that is a much better sheath than I've seen on many, many uh, places there. So what's special about this light? Okay, well, it's O-Lite, it's magnetic charging. Uh, it's also got a tail switch. So bright light warning here. So a partial press is instant turbo, direct, instant direct access to turbo. And then when you, okay, well, strobe warning, whoops. When you, press it all the way down, it will do momentary strobe. There is no constant strobe, but if you want to use constant turbo, you can press the tail switch and then just press the side foot switch and then you'll have momentary turbo and then just constant turbo if you press it down. You don't have to do it like that. You can just press it straight down. It'll stay on there. So that's, that's all you do with the tail switch. The side switch will actually access all modes. So you have your somewhat tactical usage there. And then you have your uh, side switch activation there. So just holding it down will be moonlight mode from off and then turn it off. And then or just a click, we'll put it on the last mode. You have mode memory on it. So the tail switch doesn't have mode memory for the other modes. It's only turbo, momentary turbo, constant turbo, or momentary turbo and, and momentary strobe. That's all the tail switch does can't get to the other modes from there. Side switch access is everything. So it's moonlight because it's got memory, uh, memory mode, mode memory. And then you just hold it down and it'll cycle through the regular modes. Moonlight does not normally cycle through it. It only went back on there because that was just the mode memory. Uh, your direct access to moonlight as we just did was just holding it down from the off position. And then you can get to high instantly for a double click from on. And then two more will get you turbo. And then strobe warning again. Uh, triple click is strobe. So there's your strobe frequency there. Some people, some people care about that. Something else you can do is you can always turn it off from the tail switch. So it doesn't matter what you're doing you can always turn it off from the tail switch. So that's pretty convenient. All right, no more strobe. Uh, what I was telling them though is if you had to look away for strobe is when you turn it on, you just hit it and it turns off, but it does flare up the turbo when you do that. So the pocket clip, a lot of people made a big deal out of the pocket clip. Well, it's a pretty good pocket clip. It's uh, strong enough. It's got flex because it's so long, but it, it holds pretty well. Uh, if you're using this side, the rounded edge there, it's not going to tear up your pants or anything. I, that's the one I used. And it's got both directions at once. So you, you can have it, uh, you know, lens up or you can flip it around and have it lens down without moving the pocket clip. So just, if you just prefer one way, that's fine. But depending on what you're doing, you know, if you have it in your pocket and then you can, uh, just change it. You need to, you're going to use it more frequently for a few minutes Then you can change it if you need to. And I didn't try and do it, but it looks like it actually fits up here too. I didn't really see a need to try it. There's your little lanyard hole there. That's worth noting. It's on the side, not on the top. I would imagine it'd interfere with the charging if it was on top. So issues with this light. Uh, when I first got it, the, it worked fine for the first day or two. And then for some reason, when I was using the tail switch, it would go down to a very low output, like one of the two lower modes of output, and it would kind of flicker. And that's from the tail switch. Tail switch is only supposed to be maximum output. So it, that should not be happening. But I contacted Olight. They sent out a new tail switch, and the new tail switch works fine. I haven't had any trouble with it. So I carried it for two weeks initially. And then once I got the new tail switch, I carried it for about a week and used it at work as my 
primary light. And then at home I did about, it was at least 200 clicks of the tail switch just sitting there hitting it while I was watching TV looking for it to see if it was gonna malfunction again. So literally hundreds of clicks and it did not malfunction again. So I'm satisfied with the service I got from them. Uh, no other issues with it really. As far as usage goes, with gloves, I'm wearing just regular leather work gloves now. They aren't as bulky. It was a little bit tough to sometimes to press the tail switch. Just, I, I don't, I guess the glove was preventing my thumb from reaching around far enough. I needed that extra you know, three or four millimeters, half centimeter or whatever it was. I guess I needed that. Uh, I would like it if it were easier to operate one-handed. So I can reach, I can reach the button there. That's the button. I can reach it there with my hand on a tail switch, but it's kind of hard to press. Like you, you can do it, but it's just a little awkward, which isn't entirely bad because it prevents you from accidentally hitting it. Uh, but I, I would just prefer, and I don't know how you would do it, maybe recess the switch, but then people would say they were ripping off zebra light. So I don't know if they can do it. Uh, without getting catching a lot of heck for it but other than when I was wearing gloves the switch was really not difficult to get to uh, this is one of those lights where if you're using it in, in the higher the two higher modes you want to be careful what you're doing with it because if you put it in your sheath and it with it on uh, once in a while if I have to go into a little area that's dimly lit if I can't clip it onto a hat because I'm I can't wear a regular hat where I'm out I'm wearing a hard hat so I'll put it in a sheath and I'll just turn it on and then I've got a light bouncing straight up so at least I have some light well if you're doing that with turbo or the high mode uh, this will get warm enough if the sheath closes over it it will start uh, smoking your sheath a little bit so you got to be careful with that uh, I wouldn't really say that's a problem that's probably not something most people are going to run into uh, you do have some cooling fins here. The bezel, the I guess you can call that crenulations. They're, they're not sharp. Uh, it's just there. I don't I don't know if there's really a purpose. It does have a pretty nice little cool little light blue tint to it. So the switch has. Well, I guess I can show you with the charging. The side switch does have a. Oh no, it's not going to do it. Has a little LED in there. And it, uh, so when you get low, it'll light up red. And let's see, was there anything else there? So the mode spread overall is pretty good with it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people complaining they would want, they want the full memory mode for the tail switch too. And uh, okay, I mean, I don't disagree with that. On top of all that, it's IPX8, so in theory submersible in two meters of water for up to 30 minutes and the 1.5 meter drop resistance and that's going to be standard it seems like with the with the bigger names and flashlights but if you're looking for light this one is not cheap but it is one and done kind of thing if you don't have anything or you only have small or you're broke whatever broke your old one, whatever. Um, it's definitely not the cheapest light out there. I think it was around $100 when it was new. I caught it on sale on uh, Black Friday, so I've had it that long. And it was 20 or $30 cheaper, something like that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. But if you seriously need an upgrade or you don't have anything, like I was saying, it's kind of a one and done. You can use it practically as a regular flashlight. It does have some tactical uh, application there. And something else to note before I forget is how quiet the switch is. So, like you can hear it a little bit, but that's much, much quieter than Phoenix Nightcore and uh, uh, the Through Nights. Like those have very, very positive uh, audible clicks. And this one's pretty quiet. Not silent, but it's very quiet. So if you're looking for tactical applications, I would think that would be a very, very big positive. So for the cost and for what you get, I'm gonna say this is a very good product. If 
you're just looking for a new light and you don't have a lot of money, I would look at something else. But if you do spend the money, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. And uh, I want to go ahead and do a couple of drop tests with it real quick and then we'll do a water test because this guy's a little bit, it's not really showing up on the camera, but this thing's actually a little bit dirty. I remembered to wipe the lens off, but uh, you do have an orange peel reflector in there too. You know, everybody always wonders about that. And I got a couple of beam shots earlier. So we'll do the drop test, the water test, and then I'll tag the, uh, the beam shots to the end. So I guess I should also note that it does have a magnetic tail cap because that's actually one of the big selling points for it. And uh, the only thing I have right now is a little knife that I had for work. So you can see it does stay on there, but if it takes any uh, uh, turbulence, we'll call it, like just that much drops it. So there's a little bit of texture because it's got the coating. It's not a satin finish, so it's not perfectly smooth. On something with more texture, it actually held pretty well. I used it on a garage door, steel garage door, and it held it held well on there. I mean, if you went out and, and bumped it like harder, I'm, I'm not going to bang that table that hard. I don't know what I'm doing. But if you uh, banged it a little bit hard, like if somebody came up and pounded on a garage door, it would probably fall off. But if it's just sitting there, it was fine. I think if you have a steel car hood, I think it would probably be fine on there hanging directly uh, vertically. And uh, the handle on my closet door has some steel in it. And I tried it on there and it's, it just slid straight down and then fell off because it's, uh, it was too smooth. There wasn't enough texture. So I would imagine that having the tail switch means less magnet in there, possibly weaker magnet, but uh, they can't they can't have the entire thing magnetic. So there's that, but it does work. And let's get to our water test. Turn that light off. Pay no attention to what's on the floor. Um, I was actually a little bit worried about doing drop tests because kind of a heavy light. Yeah, what was that three? So that was a toss up from waist high. That's two toss ups. All right, I'm gonna say it passes drop test. And let's go ahead and do a waterproof test here. Flashlight is on and I will mute the volume to uh, so you don't have to listen to the water running. Okay, so we're at about 55 seconds now. That water was on full, it's just regular bathroom sink. It's not high pressure or anything. Give it a few more seconds here. Looks like it's gonna hold up. Yeah, there we go. So let's go ahead and uh, take it out. On the switch there. Okay. So be brave and try the tail switch. All right. Looks like it works. And let's go see if I can hit the right light switch here. There we go. So I'm gonna say test successful.